Friday Champion Show. I really am excited uh, about our next guest. She went from writing sports skits to calling games from the broadcast booth. We are going to welcome in a true, true legend in the sense that there are very few people in this business that can look straight down the barrel of a camera and mix comedy with analysis and do it effortlessly. I can't say the word, effortlessly. There you go, words out. Uh, <laughs> we got Katie Nolan joining us right now. How are you, friend? Reveal! Hi, Carrie. Oh. Hi, just joining you from my blurry house. We are, I'm, we're still clapping. I have an audience <laughs> of 18 people in here, minus five, and we are clapping because we are excited. <laughs> um, this is really, truly an honor for me. Okay, so I just did a whole spiel on whether or not we mm. are allowed to get in person people's personal businesses. And I was told congratulations are in order. Am I am I right or am I wrong here? Oh, I don't know. Does it look like for you're you. right or does it look like you're oh, wrong okay, here? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but got to put it. I'm a singer, ladies. I'm Okay, we can't sing. Okay, but you know, I guess okay, I can't, I guess I I can't it. dance anymore to that song because it's no longer true. Yeah, I got engaged. I am so happy for you. Congratulations. Please tell me, were you surprised? Because I saw you post something, but you said nothing. And I was like, I love her. This is so classic. And then <laughs> I was like, congrats. I did question mark. So were you surprised? Yes, absolutely surprised. Um, I'm not really one of those. I didn't pick this ring out. I didn't know what ring I wanted. I didn't think I was ever going to get one of these. Um, and so this was a complete surprise. We were on a little getaway vacation. My, you know, then boyfriend, I guess now fiance and I. Um, and he just, you know, we took our dog for a walk in this lovely, we were in the Catskills, so it was all, you know, orange and yellow and all the beautiful colors of fall. And he got down on one knee and asked me to be his wife. And I was like, yeah, you know what? That sounds nice. So I did that. <laughs> he said, I think I like that. That sounds like it's something I want to do. I love it. It's I'm glad that me. you did that. Um, yeah, yeah. If you want to do this whole thing called life together, uh, let's do this thing called life together. So then here is my thought. I know you um, enough to know that you don't seem like you would be a bridezilla. So let me ask you who is in said relationship bridezilla is a groomzilla. Uh, he's no. Here's the problem: is that neither of us are Zillas about anything except <laughs> our careers. So I'm a little worried that if we don't hurry up and pick a day that we're gonna do this, we might be those people who are engaged for five years before we realize that, like, oh, we're supposed to actually get married. <laughs> so hopefully, we got no Zillas, but hopefully one of us just figures out answers to questions that we currently do not know. I actually am okay with a five-year engagement. I feel like that feels feels good, right? For it says commitment phobe. That feels good to me. Um, all right. So then, then I have to ask you this. Let's talk about the creative aspect of this. Where do you get your creativity from? Not, and, and this is not just for your wedding, but just in general. What is going on in the mind of Katie Nolan? How do you create oh so God. much? I. Oh, uh... I don't know even how to answer this question. Um, I feel like what's going on in this mind is a mess. Um, it's confusing <laughs> to me. I know it's probably confusing to other people, um, but I just feel like what I've found is that, um, you know, as somebody who grew up watching sports, loving sports, and feeling like sports TV didn't always have something specifically for me, I feel like there must be, I'm not so unique that there aren't other people out there like me who feel that way. And so once I kind of had that realization, all the things I made came from like, well, what would me of five years ago when I was sitting at home on my couch want to see on TV as a sports fan? And then just, you know, with the help of a bunch of people, uh, kind of turning that idea into a good idea and then turning that into content. So I would say it's just like the drive to make stuff that makes people laugh or look at things differently um, is mostly, I think, where it comes from. Also, probably my mom. Your mom? Okay, wait. So, wait, mom's a sports fan or? No, yes. She so my is mom, a creative uh, she woman. Was, 
she was growing up when I was growing up, she was a bartender my whole life. And so we yeah. would in the mornings, yeah. we would listen to sports talk radio because she was like, look, the more I know about this stuff, the better my tips are going to be because the more I can talk to my customers and keep them sitting at the bar. And then that just turned oh, into, you know, as any sports fan knows, you can get into it for whatever reason you want to. But once you're in it, you're in it and you're a fan. Smart. So I kind of I got it from her. My dad was my, you know, like coach. He was on like the. Uh, like the official sports side of it, I guess, but the sports talk side was all from my mom. And she just, she's got a lot of opinions. And uh, isn't that surprising to find out I've got a mom who talks a lot <laughs> and has a lot of opinions. Same, same, same. Right? Our mothers are the same. My mother was like, what do you think? And I was like, well, since you asked, I prefer my mm -hmm. milk this way as an infant. Uh-huh. So here it is, here's, that leads me to what I think, and I'm not even being, I'm not trying to blow smoke. I am, was a part of this, this video that you created when we worked at ESPN together. Mm -hmm. And we never worked on a particular show together, but I remember we were at the summit and, you, and someone was like, Katie wants you and a bunch of you know, other women to come together and be a part of this video. It's the secret society of women in sports media. Um, we walk in, and when I tell you, you were firing on all cylinders. This is how I remember. <laughs> you were doing your thing. You were like, move over here, go right here, walk over there, dance there. Like, we were just like, okay, okay, okay. And, and you had a script already. And you knew everyone's lines. Remember, I was like, okay, because I was reading mine. I was like, got it, got it, got it. And then I was, you were like, oh, and they tried again. Like, and then I was like, got it. My point being is that you were so fast and so quick, and you knew exactly the shot you wanted. I mean, I felt like you could have literally, if you could have cloned yourself, you could have done the camera work, you could have edited, you could have did it all. And I was so impressed. <sighs> and then it is arguably one of the most viral videos in sports history for women. Where did that all come from? Oh man, first of all, hearing you describe that back, I'm like, oh, I must be so infuriating to be around on days like that, like <laughs> shoot day. But the, the idea came from this, um, you know, on Twitter, we get a lot on Twitter, um, but a lot of times we would always see this like recurring theme of us being in some sort of cabal that we all knew each other and were scheming and plotting to, I don't know, take down sports or t sports TV. I don't really know actually what their thesis was, but it was very funny to me. Uh, and it actually kind of caused us to come together. Like I remember a bunch of women on, in sports media who didn't know each other yet because of that, becoming friendly through the internet and then sort of, I don't know, forming a cabal. So it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so I just wanted, I knew there was something funny there that we could poke fun at um, just from completely from our perspective. Like I think women who love sports don't get enough credit for like really being okay with the like not being the people they're targeting for all of these years. Yeah. This was one piece of content that I was like, I want this to be for us. If other people don't get it or it makes them mad, I genuinely don't care. I think this is so funny to us. Um, and then was lucky enough to actually be able to make it. And working at a place like ESPN where a bunch of women who I respected uh, their whole careers were already gonna be there because we had this W Summit. I was like, well, look, it's a gathering of the minds. How many of them can I convince yeah. to be in this stupid little yeah. sketch where we all act like we're uh, inducted into a society? It was, and it still is, a list of a list of women who cover sports. And our, and our, our goddess was Doris Burke. She's our Ugh. North Star. Shout out to Doris Burke. And it was so creative. You guys have to Google this. If not, it, it probably has, what, over 2 million views by now. I'm, I'm, oh, probably, I'm million, being... Yeah. I'm being, yeah, oh my, it was, every time I go somewhere, they go, you know, the premise is how can we ruin sports for men? Because it is, because we get so much, I was having this conversation this morning, I'm being honest with you, I was having this conversation this morning, um, and I was like, I really am frustrated with the fact that we can't enjoy a sport without someone from the peanut gallery telling us we don't know what we're talking about, get back in the kitchen. Uh, women suck you we have very little room for error like if I said someone's name mm. wrong that's it she doesn't know sports mm. that's that mm -hmm. this is it she's ruining sports you listen my friend you can over relate and so when you did this it was beautiful it was this vindication did you not feel vindicated by its popularity yeah I think so I also felt like um 
like all women that love sports could feel vindicated because you know that, like I said, something can go to a broader audience, but usually it's, it gains its virality from the audience it was made for. And it feels like it was a thing that uh, I saw a lot of women be like, yes, this is me. I am one of these and like feel like they could identify as a sports fan. So yeah, it was absolutely awesome. I hope that there are women out there who saw that and were like, that's right. We, we exist. And, and I don't know. I just, I'm <laughs> glad people liked it. And I do think we need to say that you were an incredible actress. Oh. <laughs> I mean, stop it. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> stop it. Give me more. I'm so, I'm so humble. Do you think so? An absolute star. <laughs> Give her all the awards. I had, I honestly really did have fun. As you can see, I'm doing the same here. I had so much fun on that. I was kind of hesitant, to be honest, because I am just a, I'm grumpy. And I was like, wait, okay, well, I'll try it. And then it was just so much fun. And my way of ruining sports was to host Sports Center for men, Monday through Friday. And and then it was everyone else's way. Like Sarah Spain had a great way. Maria Taylor had something. Judy Foudy. It was just beautiful. It was beautiful that everyone came together. I... I, however, though, in a serious way, when you got the gig at Apple TV, I was really happy for you. I said, this is this girl is a superstar, which you have heard. Um, and the fact that you lean into it in a very humble way, like whatever. But I know that it had to be tough, because baseball's a tough sport mm. in general. The fans are tough. How was that transition for you um, being in the booth? It was, uh, whew, it's the hardest thing I think I've ever done in my career so far. Hopefully, I will be lucky enough to continue to have one for a while. But it was a job offer that came through. I was at a period in my life, you know, I'd left ESPN. I was trying to figure out, like, oh, I did this thing for the Olympics. And I was like, what? what's my name? It wasn't as obvious as it feels like it's always been before, which was like, oh, you go to the other company and try the same thing. And so I'm <laughs> sort of in the spot where I didn't know what was next. And this offer came from Apple, which at first I was like, do you have the right person? Uh, this, I'm, I'm, I host studio shows that are like comedy based. I don't really think that you meant to ask me to be in the booth. Um, but they gave me this pitch that convinced me that this was, this could be something I could do where they were like, look, we want to make the viewing experience to include more yeah. people. We want to make it, uh, interesting to different types of people. We want to make, you know, if these games aren't going to get any shorter, we might as well try to make them more interesting with more discussion, almost like a podcast during a baseball game. And I was like, mm -hmm. Oh, well, if, if you do know who I am and you do know what I do and you think I can do this, then let me see if I can do this. Um, and then, you know, we started doing it and it was a long season. I think it was longer than I had anticipated, but look, I've always loved baseball. I maybe haven't been as big into baseball in recent years. Um, you know, as a Red Sox fan, when they traded Mookie Betts, I took a little break for my, my mental health and for my heart. Uh, but I've always loved baseball. It's a sport I'm probably the closest to. I played softball as a kid. Like I said, my dad was my coach. So I was like excited to get back into baseball and what a season it was to do that. Um, but it was, a, it was definitely different. It was definitely out of my comfort zone, but I felt like worst case scenario, if it didn't work out for me professionally, it would work out for me personally. Cause the tools that I gained and the things I learned in doing that, even just for one season will somehow in some way in the future, help me in whatever it is I end up doing or making, you know, I, you know, uh, it, it, it takes an incredible amount of courage to step into something like that, knowing that there will be pushback, vitriol, whatever it is. You know, it's just mm. the, it's just the world that we live in. It's just the patriarchy. I, I'm not going to anti-man this entire moment, but you were doing your very first game, um, and I remember you tweeting, I think it was your first game, why you went silent. Um, do you mind talking about that? Because I felt that. You know what I mean? I felt um, that as a yeah. woman. I felt that when I was on first take. Like that, that I felt those <laughs> moments. I, I understood what you were saying. Yeah, I think, um, so the first game, to me, was uh, probably emotionally the easiest. Even though you would think I'd be the most scared, the way the season ended up going, it was, it, I didn't really realize how much people were gonna be mad. Um, it, look, we tried to do a different type of broadcast that um, we didn't really warn anybody was what we were going to do. So I think in to give these people who yelled at me on the Internet a little bit of uh, grace, I understand 
going to something that you've watched every year. It's always been the same. It's it's literally traditional. Yeah. And then something different is there, and that sort of catching you off guard and, and making you uncomfortable. Where I won't give them grace is uh, just the amount of anger and vitriol that came my way for joking during a baseball game, uh, laughing during a baseball game, asking questions during a baseball game. Like, I think that a lot of times sports fans expect any sports fan to be a sports expert, to like know every single thing and every single rule. Yeah. But to me, it's like, well, if you know everything about a sport that much and you're not working in it, what? It, what, how much of your brain do you have? Because I use all of my brain on the thing I have to focus on, which is sports. And, and there's people out there who work jobs that are just watching sports, that are just like, oh, I don't know, when does the helmet not count as an extension of the runner? Like, those are things that just are obscure rules that people don't know. And I feel like yeah. normalize asking questions. Just say like, hey, remind me of that rule? Instead of me Googling it and then saying it, I'll just remind me of that rule? Because that's a casual way that people watch sports. Anyway, I'm rambling. Point is, uh, people were no, very not. mad. Um, people yeah. were very, very mad. And so, uh, yeah. in like the, once I checked Twitter, cause my goal, my thinking was like, oh, I can be that, the person in the booth that checks Twitter during the game. And it's like, here's what people are talking about. Here's the questions people have. And so I checked Twitter, big mistake, uh, and saw how, just how mad people were. And, um, just like the old school sexist things they said to me, which I know are still out there, but I don't know. I just, I guess I hadn't heard in a while. Um, and then I just was sort of, I sort of shut up for the rest of the game. Cause I felt like, look, booths have been two people before there's three people in this booth. If I don't speak for the rest of the game, it's not going to be, it's not, you know, nothing's going to be missing, uh, which is a terrible, um, approach to have to something where you're supposed to want to be a part of it. So, uh, it, it was tough. It was a really tough season because every week was a different team. So every week, a different team experienced us for the first time. It felt like. Uh, and now, of course, we had very loyal viewers. We had wonderful fans. But there was a lot of, like, fresh anger and hatred every single week uh, that was tough to deal with. And I, you know, honestly yeah. thought that if you had told me that at the beginning of the season, I'm like, dude, I've been doing this for long enough. There's nothing they can say. And I think week two, I might have tweeted, or I definitely deleted it by now, but I think I tweeted, like, wow, I guess you guys still can get to me. You are very mean. And it's not, uh, what, like, Why? I know I've been in this job long enough that like I'm not I don't really relate anymore to like the average person on Twitter because I've always used Twitter with a platform. I'm not trying to brag or anything. I'm just trying to explain my perspective. I just do not I have such a hard time understanding people who don't like something and then need to go directly yeah. to that person and tell them that they hate them. It's like what what good is that doing any of us? It's disgusting. And, and it, it also shows the lack of our ability, which I'll talk about later on the show, because been, I've been on this one for a while, the lack of our ability to actually connect with other humans. Social media makes it okay to disconnect and say whatever you want, but it takes a really special person to, to, to get this hate and then say, let me just actually type down how much hatred I have for one person I've never met before and let me send it to them. And the reason why I say that you're brave and you have a lot of courage, you went into this season knowing, and probably not knowing how tough it would be, but knowing that you would be a novice in some areas in, in a very traditional sport in a lot of ways. Um, and new folks just aren't allowed. People hate change. It's just the fact of what it is. We can, it's so easy to lean on complaining. Like, it's really hard to sit there and give somebody a compliment without them feeling less about themselves. And so, I'm, look, I'm, I deal with it every day. Like, every single day, I'm, you know, I'm darned if I do, darned if I'm not. I don't know if we can curse yep. yet on this network. I'm going to say darn. <laughs> you know, so I can't, <laughs> I can't please anyone. And I watched you say, okay, you can get to me, which you said you did delete. And that's human, and that's honest. And, and quite frankly, it just made me love you more. It, it, it was brave of you to talk about what hurt you, and you're not Teflon. Like, we're just not. We, we're made of things, and, our, and sometimes people can get there and hurt our feelings. Will you eventually create a video telling those fans to 
go sit somewhere and kick rocks. Can we do that so together? My, Can we tell yeah, them to kick rocks? Yes, I feel like, yes. I, I had an idea like week four where I was like, oh, I'm going to just um, journal my experience uh, of this whole season and at the end of the year release some sort of content ranking fan bases by their meanest online trolls. Uh, I have not yet put that together, but it's just one of those things where it's like you got there's no accountability. And so I was like, oh, if you're uh, if you're grouping together as teams, well, then I can judge you as team yeah. fan bases and I'll let you know who uh -huh. of you are mean and who of you are nice, mm -hmm. who of you know how to use the Internet and who of you are clearly not uh, capable of doing that. And so, you know, that's a little teaser. Maybe we'll make a video for that. I don't know who I'd have you play. Though, I love it. Everyone's a monster. Yeah, okay, wait, oh, wait, 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 oh, wait. So then tell me this before, because one, you are back next season, correct? You are doing I this don't know. forever, I don't correct? Know. Or at I least don't, for the first Maybe. You know. I have no idea. It was, we're going to find out. I'm going to have meetings about it, and I'll, I'll let you know before I let anybody else know. You can get the exclusive. But it was a, a one year trial for me and I think for them. So we'll see. Okay, well, then can you tell me the meanest fan base thus far? Do you have a top five, Houston, top three? Houston Astros. Uh, mm -hmm. By a lot, by a lot, Carrie, not by a little. I'm feeling away. Why mm -hmm. were they rewarded with a chip if they were so mean to you? It's, How do you I know, feel? It's a good How do question. I feel? It's a good question. Uh, probably because I'm overreacting and they're just mad because they were, you know, they cheated and then got, you know, yelled at by fans for a while. I get it. They've got <laughs> hurt people, hurt people, you know, they're just paying it forward. <laughs> Hurt people, hurt people, which is why I'm glad you and I are both healed. Thank you very much. <laughs> Fully, top to bottom. You know me. No, nothing wrong with me. I'm all set. Fully healed, <laughs> therapy done. All set, kids. Uh, doesn't take anything strange to stare down a little black hole and talk to it for hours on end. No one's weird. Not me, guys. Um, <laughs> Katie Nolan, you are a pleasure. I needed two hours with you. Thank you for coming on. Um, I wish you the best of luck. Even if you don't go back, your choice, I'm sure. Um, you know that, obviously, the skies is the limit. You know, you're, you're one of those rare talents. And I don't want you to forget it and don't let these people on the internet stop you from being you. Never let anybody stop you from shining or talking, more importantly, because that's what I need to hear, okay? I need to hear more Katie Nolan thoughts. Thank you, Carrie, I love you. Good luck with the show, thank you for having me. Thank you so much, thank you so much. I love my audience too, because they love you just as much. Katie Woo! Nolan, folks, on the Carrie Champion Show. We did it, we did it, we did it. I love her, I do not like mean people. I love her, I don't like mean people.